What would you say to people who doubt the value of a monarchy, or watched the ceremony, wrote as they did in some of our newspapers that this is weird, out of touch, has no relevance, has no meaning? Interestingly, there are people who would never say, would never, would absolutely do you over in Australia if you criticised Aboriginal rituals, for example. But our own, somehow, are to be dismissed. You presumably would defend them and point to their values. What would be your essential argument? Um, you've always got to be very careful about ritual because if it becomes ritual for its own sake, it is pointless, it becomes Ruritanian. And then people laugh at it and they don't take it seriously. The question is, what does the ritual symbolise? And the ritual symbolises the structure of our constitution and both our constitutions, that they are um, bottom-up concepts that lead inevitably to a pinnacle that is the head of state. Now, whether that head of state is a monarch or uh, is a governor general doesn't particularly matter. It matters how you construct your state and what the basis of power is. And the constitution, as a very occasional event, symbolizes that in a way that I think reminds people of how they are in fact governed. Um, Republics do it every four or five years when they uh, inaugurate a president. There's much less ceremony involved in that because you're doing it regularly and people perhaps think less about the structures of their state in republics. But I think the symbolism illustrates, points to, reminds us of something that is both important and beneficial. So it's not the coaches. I mean, you may like the coaches or you may not like the coaches. They're, they're part of the grandeur of it. It's that actual ceremony that is really very important and links us back, of course, to our history as well and the stability that our constitution has given us. And stability is essential for prosperity. Unstable states are never prosperous. I was in America when the Queen became very ill. And it, it, where I was, it was very, very early in the morning. I'd woken early because my body clock was out because I was in another country. Uh, and... Uh, the major programming was all interrupted in America, Republican, Republican America, of course, you know, that broke away from Britain. Um, the, the news services were saturated with uh, uh, minute by minute coverage of what was unfolding in Britain. They don't have a monarchy. They rejected the model. Their forefathers argued endlessly. You got cancelled if you were an American uh, founding father who indicated that there might be some value in the British model of monarchy. And yet here they are, having rejected the idea, totally absorbed, as I realised, uh, with the idea of the British monarch passing on. Very interesting. It, it, it is very interesting. And it's a very British thing, because although the Queen was the second longest reigning monarch in history, um, she'd only just overtaken the recently deceased King of Thailand, uh, who people hadn't reacted in this way to. And when Emperor Hirohito of Japan died after a very long reign, they didn't react to him in that way either. I think it is the symbolism of monarchy that is so important. And to your point, the monarchy is an indication of liberty that is important. The liberty that the British constitution, the British model has brought. That's why it's interesting. That's why Americans are interested. It's not just the celebrity culture. Um, Though I also think that the Queen was a very remarkable woman, that, that the role she carried out so well for such a long time was tremendously important over a, a difficult and uncertain period. The servant model of leadership. Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely.